All right, all right, all right. I will finally tell you how to make your own Spider-Man costume. I finally hit 100k on YouTube, and thanks to you guys, I can finally make this channel into a career. And as a reward for the space you allow me to take in your inbox, I'm finally gonna tell you step by step how to make your very own Spider-Man costume. Now it's important to know that I've already covered how to make your own Spider-Man mask in a different video, so I won't be covering that here, but you should definitely check out that video if you expect to make a full Spider-Man suit. But I'm not cutting any corners in this video either. I'm gonna go the full nine miles in this suit. That means I'm gonna be detailing my methods and expecting you to know how to do certain things without me explaining them to you. Which means you gotta know how to use a sewing machine, or by the very least, sew by hand. Actually, that's pretty much it. You just have to know how to sew. I definitely recommend figuring out how to use a sewing machine over learning how to hand sew if you have the option to choose one over the other. You could definitely hand sew an entire Spider-Man suit, sure, but it would take an absurdly long time and using a sewing machine would get it done much faster and much more efficiently. So go pony up and go buy a sewing machine somewhere. And get some red thread while you're at it. Okay, you got that? Awesome, now let's talk fabric. Actually, get some blue thread too, before we go on. Yeah, get some red and blue thread. Okay, now let's talk about fabric. Now, if you're a beginner, I recommend getting some basic four-way stretch spandex. This material won't give you any trouble, and you won't have to worry about whether your pattern pieces are facing the wrong way. I'd recommend buying one and a half yards of each spandex color. 1.5 yards of blue and 1.5 yards of red should do you good. But if you aren't a beginner, I can show you some super fancy fabrics that I love using on my suits. The Liverpool Bullet Spandex is one of my favorite fabric textures. It adds a sense of durable texture to your costume. I try to use it on any Spider-Man suit that needs to have a sense of texture to it. Texture, 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 all you say is texture. It can be uncomfortable at times, and you'll need to put fray check on the edges to give it a longer shelf life, but it looks great. Ribbed spandex is a super comfortable texture, and it feels great to wear and it looks pretty good too. The texturing is quite subtle, so if you want something low key and comfy, this is your fabric. If you want something shiny and versatile, you should try some Mystique foil spandex. I use this on any suit that simply needs to be shiny. Think Iron Spider or Spider-Man 2099. If you're making a classic suit, try using velvet spandex for your blue sections. This gives you a shiny outline to your suit and makes your costume look like it was shaded like a Spider-Man costume from the 80s comics. And that's about it. I'm gonna go buy my spandex now and get back to you when I need to show you how to make the pattern. You know what, the other problem is that there's too many people on the road. If all these bums could just get off the fucking road, then they would not interfere with my job. Look out, dickheads, bloody, get a job, get a job. Fuck off, I got fucking packages to deliver. Fuck off, fuck off, fuck off, fuck off, fuck off, fuck off. So, there's a really easy way to make a pattern that fits your body exactly. All you need is a tight-fitting set of clothing for every part of your body. Whether this piece of clothing is a Spider-Man suit, a muscle shirt, skinny jeans, yoga pants, long socks, short socks, anything that fits you tightly will work. Basically, you'll use these pieces of clothing to base the measurements of your patterns on. First, start with the torso piece. Cut out exactly half of your shirt's torso, and be sure to stop exactly at the sleeve. And be sure to give yourself an extended neckline too something to tuck your mask in when you wear it fully. Cut your torso out and then make a second copy of it and now move on to the arm. Lay your sleeve out flat and trace it out. And then flip your traced sleeve so that it's double and then cut out the sleeve. It should look something like this when you're done. Now lay your selected pants down flat over your pieces of paper and cut out an exact half of them. Be sure to draw on a longer waist so that you have enough fabric to tuck under your shirt and then cut out your pants pattern. Now get one of your socks and lay them out flat and draw yourself a shape like the one on screen and then cut out your shape. This boot is gonna go all the way up to your calf if you do it correctly. So make sure you give yourself enough length. You'll then want to trace out your full hand with your fingers neatly spread out. Then you'll add a long strip to the bottom of the hand to give your glove a cuff. And now cut out that piece. You should have every piece of your pattern by now. Now grab your torso pieces and start to draw out the Spider-Man red sections over your torso and arm pieces. You should give yourself a thick belt at the bottom, a thin portion on your waist, 
and a thick portion that spreads out across your chest. Leave a mark on the arm pattern directly where your pen line ends for your torso, and then move on to the next torso piece. You'll draw your line at the top portion around here, and then draw the belt at the same thickness you drew the front torso piece's belt for. Then match up your top line on your back piece to your marked arm pattern. Then. Take your marked arm pattern and draw vertical lines from the two marked parts all the way down to the bottom cuff. You'll now take all your pattern pieces and cut along these lines to split them up into the different red and blue sections you'll be making. These are the blue pieces and these are the red pieces. You'll then want to take your blue pieces and lay them flat out over your blue fabric and trace them. I recommend doing this over the textureless side in case your marker is super dark. Make sure to leave a bit of extra room with your tracings. Now for most of these pattern pieces I've instructed you to cut them out in halves. So basically you only have half of one shirt and half of a pair of pants. But the reason I do this is because you're basically just going to be making doubles of them and having like two sides would just be kind of pointless so I cut them up into halves. So basically every pattern that you just have like a half for you're going to be making two pieces of those out of fabric. I really hope this video isn't super confusing. I'm going to have to edit this a shit ton in post to make this a lot more readable. This is so confusing. For your red patterns, lay them out over your red fabric and trace them out closely while giving yourself more access fabric on the outsides of the pattern. Those being the original edges before you cut the torso pieces into the red and blue section. Try assembling each part of the costume one by one. I'll start with the shirt first, meaning I'll cut out all the fabric I need for the shirt with these pattern pieces on screen. You should now have all of these pieces in red fabric. And now for the blue pieces. Now that they're all cut out, Attach your pieces together using pins. These will hold the red and blue pattern pieces together while you sew them in the sewing machine, which you should be doing using the zigzag stitch. I really hope you watched a, a good video about figuring out how to sew with a machine because I will have lost so many of you by now. I mean, I guess you could try fabric glue, I guess, but only use a small amount, okay? Don't go crazy. Now that you've got those pattern pieces pinned, you can sew them together. I recommend top stitching them if you're a beginner, which is what I'll be doing in this video. Now that the pattern pieces are all stitched together, we can take a break to do something fun. Making the back logo! I ordered some red faux leather on Amazon for mine, and cut it up with my fabric scissors into this spiffy logo. I then pinned it, and sewed it right into the suit. But this pleather is tough, so it was hard for me to cleanly sew into the machine, so... I recommend gluing on your back logo, or keeping it small so that it's easier. Either that or just use some spare fabric you have lying around. You can also get some red puff paint and freehand your own back logo on here. Alright, now we're going to sew the shirt pieces together to complete the whole shirt. So, you'll take your two torso pieces and sew along these lines to create your neck hole. Then, you're basically going to link your arm piece to your torso piece like so, and sew over this part to connect these two pieces. Make sure you sew the blue portion on with blue thread or you can sew it together from the inside so that there's no extra red thread. Now, you should have both arms attached to your suit. Now your shirt hasn't been fully assembled, but it's pretty close. Now turn the shirt inside out, lay it out flat, and sew up from the waist, through the armpit, and then to the end of the sleeves on both sides. And you should now have a finished shirt. You can take a break to put it on if you want to replicate the ultimate wrestler look. Now it's time to put on the webs. I recommend getting some huge pieces of cardboard to stuff out pieces of the suit that you need to draw webs on. But since I have a mannequin, I'm gonna be using that instead. Don't ask me where I got it, I, I got it on Facebook Marketplace, you, you guys gotta look around and get crafty to find one of these. I basically drew some grid lines out with fabric chalk, and then freehanded it with Sharpie. I made sure to look at reference images of the Bagley rendition of the front logo, and I recommend you do the same if it's your first spider logo. I then proceeded to draw the rest of the webbing on the suit flowing from the neck and out onto the rest of the red sections of the shirt. If you're using cardboard to stuff out your suit, you can always cut out thinner pieces to stuff out your arms so that you can draw cleaner lines. And that should be your shirt done. Come on, put it on and admire yourself. This is a serious achievement, even if the suit's not quite done yet. Now it's time for your tight pants. If you haven't already, lay your legging pattern piece on your blue fabric and trace out their shape so that you have a fully completed pants shape on the fabric do this twice to create the front and back of your leggings now 
Lay your two legging pieces over each other and pin them together so that they'll be easier to sew. Now sew along these lines on your patterns. If you've done this correctly, the pants should fit you snug in the demonetized zone and fit you well around your abs. This is basically all you need to do for the pants look wise. Now all we need to do is make sure you can attach the pants to the shirt. Now go buy a strip of velcro. You're basically just sewing velcro patches into the suit at this point. You'll want to put on the shirt and pants yourself to mark where the velcro would fit best and go from there. I like to put a large strip along the red section of the belt on the back and then a diamond on the belt of the front. This helps preserve the point of the Spider-Man belt despite this shirt having more of a flat end. All right, now let's get to sewing some Velcro. After that, your shirt and pants should be done. You're literally at the home stretch. All you need to do now is sew together the gloves and boots. Lay out your red fabric and fold it over so that you have enough room to lay out your glove pattern over the fold. Take your Sharpie and trace your hand pattern onto your fabric. Make sure you're as close to the pattern as possible with your tracing line. It will make this much easier to sew. Now, once it's all traced out, Pin the fabric down at the fingers, thumb, wrist, and at the mouth of the glove. You'll then take the pinned fabric and sew along your drawn line with the sewing machine. Now, cut along the outside of your sewn lines. And once you've cut off all that excess fabric, put the glove on and pull it off so that it goes from inside out to outside in. Do this again, and you should have two pairs of gloves. Or one pair of gloves. Yeah, you'll have one pair of gloves. Now for the boots, you'll basically be doing the same exact thing, but just way easier. You simply fold the fabric over the edge and line the edge of the boot pattern up with the fold line and then trace the pattern out. You should know what to do by now. Pin that son of a bitch and put that motherfucker in your shitting machine. Take it out and cut off the excess fabric. And then do this again and you should have your boots. We are so close to being done now. You'll want to get your sharpie again and put your glove on your non-drawing hand. You'll want to draw the web pattern onto your whole hand now. I use this thick sharpie to stuff out the fingers so I could have an easier time drawing the finger webbing, and I recommend you do the same. Once you finish drawing on one glove, move on to the second glove and put it on the same hand you had it on last time. Now draw the web pattern you drew on your palm on the top of your hand and vice versa for the other side. Now you should have two webbed gloves. Now for your boots. I recommend grabbing a piece of cardboard and cutting out a slightly larger version of your boot pattern out of it, and then put your boot onto your cardboard piece and begin to draw out your web pattern for both boots. And now, all your suit pieces should be webbed up, meaning your entire suit should be finished. Put it all on! Look at that, I bet you look great. While I know some of you may be happy with your work, you can also acknowledge that it may not be perfect. Maybe you messed up a web line and your spider logo is a little lower than you wanted it to be. That's perfectly fine, since this should be your first time making a Spider-Man suit this way. This was my first Spider-Man suit. Not everything's going to be perfect the first time, but... I hope you liked your first attempt enough to try again. But I understand if not. Fabric is very expensive. Uh, hold on, I... I need to record an outro segment for this video because I there was there was not gonna be one at first and this video sort of ends on a weird bleak note without it I I just really want to say thank you so much for 100k subscribers I remember as a kid always seeing all these youtubers get to this point where I'm at right now where they have their plaque and they're holding it in their hands and they're always like thank you I can't I can't express my appreciation to you guys enough I can't even say it or whatever but I I'm at that point right now I just want you guys to know it I'm at that point and I'll spare you the big youtuber speech and I will just say thank you thank you thank you thank you I really appreciate each and every single one of you and I'm I'm really happy with where I'm at on this platform in life and in everything like that and that's because of you guys and i i just want to say thank you that being said uh this is a suit tutorial video so if you have any questions please be sure to ask them in the comment section below and before i go there's one thing i wanted to note about the special lenses for this costume that you see in this video they're obviously reflective and if you've gotten to this point You've obviously noticed that the Spider-Man mask tutorial doesn't show you how to make those reflective lenses. But, 
fret not, I will tell you in the outro without the use of visual aids, so take what you will, I guess. But I used two-way mirror film, and basically what I did was I just layered my mesh with the two-way mirror film on top of it and then put them onto the lenses. So if you want to do the mirrored lenses, that's how I did it. Little little tidbit of advice from me for all of you who sat through the the very cringy thank you message I just gave you all for helping me reach 100k again I really love you guys thank you so much for being here with me and everything I really hope this spider-man suit tutorial video helped you out a lot if you have any questions you need any help I'll I will try my best to answer in the comments I love you guys and I'll see you in the next video